You're originally born from here? California. Born and raised. Yeah. Well, no, I was born in Spain, but I was raised in uh, California. Nobody's from here. Yeah. <laughs> introduce yourself. Yeah. Formally introduce yourself. I know. <laughs> like, we got to yeah, go through from the here? intros. Yeah, David. David's a true corn-fed, corn-fed. Uh, born and raised. <laughs> corn raised. <laughs> born and raised. <laughs> that so, wonderful GMO right. corn. Kind of introduce yourself and let them know what you do. And well, up until now, I'm doing several things, but up until November of last year, I closed escrow on a hobby that, that started in a garage and then turned into a, a full a full fledged brewery and winery for. 15, 16 years, and so a passion that I that I love to make wine. I'm a winemaker, pretty much, a brewer and a winemaker, and uh, that's how I met Louis. So in the course of the years, I've met a lot of quality people. I've networked with a lot of people, and but uh, now I'm just kind of, uh, we're working on a couple other things. And you made, uh, when you were selling wine, you made the wines that you sold? Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I started making five gallons of Merlot in my garage. Because you know, I just I had quit my 19 year job as a finance uh, uh, manager, and then I said, "What am I going to do with myself?" And one day I just started uh, googling how to make wine, and I made five gallons of Merlot. And after 30 days, I tasted it; it was crappy, so I threw it in the backyard. <laughs> I did it again, and I'm a perfectionist, so I'm like, I did it again, and I threw it away. I did it again. So six months later, six six five batches later. I went back to the drawing board and I started Googling what's wrong with the, why, what am I doing wrong? And I wasn't doing anything wrong. I just, I, after 30 days, it's done for many. You just got to put it in a different container and then let it condition out. So I was throwing away good wine. I just wasn't giving it enough time to mellow out. It was very acidic. So yeah, that taught me a lesson. <laughs> Read the instruction manual completely. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, that, that got me started on making wine. All of a sudden my two car garage turned into a laboratory. I got so much passion for making it. I actually went to Davis and did the analogy program. Uh, and that's analogy is the science of making alcohol with anything and vitology, which is the growing of grapes and, uh, any type of vinifera. And okay. So, yeah. One more time. What was that? Analogy that and vitology. Vitology is the science agriculture pretty much. And analogist is a scientist that makes alcohol. So, uh, so the UC Davis is known for the university that that teaches all all the Napa kids how to make wine for their parents, you know. So yeah, and that led to me having to expand out of the uh, garage because it was illegal to have more than two hundred gallons of uh, of uh, alcohol <laughs> in your house. Mm. And uh, I became the first bonded winery and brewery garage in California. Um, wow, th- really? <laughs> yeah, didn't know that about you. To this date, it is the the official only winery brewery bonded garage um what does that mean bonded well bond uh in order for you to to have a winery or, or make wine you have to have a you have to be bonded insured oh gotcha. so the federal government regulates you because they want their taxes on each gallon that you make of alcohol okay and so f- there's alcohol tax and there's a resale tax and then there's other kind of taxes but government wants their piece and so in order for you to make a uh, wine specifically in 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 the States, you have to ask for permission for wine. Mm. But I found out for beer, you didn't, you didn't have to. You, you're you just notifying them that you're going to make beer. But they kind of treat it the same way because they're the old, uh, uh, what's his name from um, that movie? He's very, Elliot Ness, if you remember. The old laws were, they were busting Al Capone for all the alcohol he was making. Prohibition yeah. laws. Prohibition laws. So they are still the same laws. They haven't changed. Mm. And so... That being said, uh, for wineries, you need to have a bond, and you need to pay taxes, and you need to be insured. So, yeah, okay. long story short, fast forward, full-fledged urban winery and brewery combined, vegan, organic, combined in uh, in Covina, California. Nice. And, yeah, November, I closed escrow to a Japanese uh, corporation, and uh, they're running it now under the name of uh, Nova Brewing Company, but the actual... Facility when it started was Rev Rev Winery and Brewery Inc., which okay. uh, I had the honor of having my my main man over here play. I don't listen to too many people play, but let me tell you, when there's classic music involved, um, I'm in the corner right there, just mesmerized. And that's the the trifactor for those who listen in and remember from the first episode 
uh, well, I think it was the second episode with Luis on how I we met and how I performed at the brewery. This is the owner of that brewery. So this is how you're seeing the growth of American Gypsy podcast come together, even just from the history of my street performing to networking to just the building within the three years that we've been here. That's legit. 